very word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them. He cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, this is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and two fish. And looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Whenever St. Matthew makes reference to a previous event, he is telling us to take it very seriously. He begins today, when Jesus heard of it, that the sec, uh, that is the section immediately preceding this one, usually called the martyrdom of St. John the Baptist. Yet Matthew will emphasize the dinner at which it occurred. And as we prepare for the next stage in our lives as Christians in general, and as members of St. Charles Borromeo Church in particular, so should we. St. Matthew has shortened St. Mark's version of the story but the outlines are still there. John has condemned Herod for marrying his brother's wife, Herodias. John was popular among the people, and Herod did not want him free to preach rebellion, but also did not want to make a martyr of him. At his birthday a banquet, Herodias' daughter performed a dance, which we may presume lascivious. This delighted Herod, and no doubt influenced by alcohol, he offered her anything she wanted. He perhaps thought that she would want a necklace or fine linens, but at her mother's urging, she asked for the head of John the baptizer. Meals are revelatory in the Bible. and This one certainly revealed a dysfunctional family and a world closed in on itself and quite vicious. John was immediately executed, and after his disciples buried him, they went to Jesus. This is where our passage begins. Here we have a totally different dynamic. Jesus goes out to the crowd which was following him, and unlike Herod, who was motivated by lust and calculation, Jesus' heart was marked by pity and went out to them. He cured the sick. Certainly a great gift, but then offer them something more. Miracles usually begin with something physical, but then reveal another dimension. So it is here. It is late, and the people were getting hungry and needed to eat. The disciples suggest that Jesus send them away. Jesus does not cast out. Jesus brings in. And he tells them to give them something to eat themselves. All they have is five loaves and two fish. He 
tells the people to recline, takes the bread and fish, looks up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves. The apostles were then able to feed everyone till they were satisfied. The Jews, both in Jesus' original audience and Matthew's community, would have seen many references to the Old Testament. I have put some of these uh, on the website for your inspection. All Christians, however, would recognize both the Last Supper and our own Eucharist, uh, the Last Supper in Matthew and uh, the version in Paul, I also have put on the website. It too was in the night. The apostles reclined as for a formal dinner. Jesus blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. He then told them that he would celebrate this again in the kingdom. We must remember that the kingdom for Matthew does not mean only heaven. The kingdom, as we have seen in the parables, as we have read the last several weeks, is already present in the ministry of Jesus and continues in the church, but is not yet completed. We can begin our celebration here and now. And unlike the Her Herod's meal, this one brings life. We need to look at one other detail. After all were satisfied, they picked up the fragments left over, 12 wicker baskets full. 12 reflects the tribes of the Jewish people. He makes 12 disciples into apostles and gives them authority over these tribes. Yet the 12 tribes did not exist for centuries. The 10 tribes of the Northern Kingdom were dispersed with the Assyrian invasion of 721 BC. Even the Judeans were divided by the Babylonians centuries later. This would be like putting the toothpaste back in the tube. It humanly cannot be done. Yet, this was considered a sign of the Messiah. The Jews called it the ingathering of the people. The gathering of the fragments into the 12 baskets was a sign that the Eucharist, which would develop and, the tw uh, uh, and which the 12 would celebrate, would fulfill this requirement. The original members of Matthew's community were born Jews. I would have responded to this very favorably. Yet always with Matthew, Jesus is expanding the notion of community. He ends his gospel with the great command, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This might not have been as well accepted by them, but Matthew did not see the church destroying Judaism or even replacing it, but expanding it. We will see for the next two weeks in our reading from the letter of the Romans how Paul develops this idea. But we will ask, need to ask ourselves, as we renew St. Charles, how are we going to live it? The Second Vatican Council referred to the Eucharist as the source and summit of the Christian life. Every aspect of our lives is connected and energized by it. But Eucharist is a verb. It, it ce its celebration creates and maintains our covenant relationship with God and our fellow humans. We have celebrated the Eucharist properly when we deepen those relationships. At our Thursday night book club, sometimes referred to as the Thursday Night Fights, we read that Eucharist makes the church. I know I have truly participated in Sunday Mass when I have allowed the liturgy to strengthen my relationship with others during the week. This is what makes the church and reflects the true meaning of today's miracle and the Last Supper. 
as we return to, renew, and revise St. Charles, we must first recognize the importance of the Eucharist. Let us ask ourselves who we want our community to serve and what relationships will be necessary to do it. We will discover that we cannot do it by ourselves, just as the apostles did not have enough to feed the people by themselves. We need the Lord, just as the Lord expanded the loaves and the fish to feed the multitude in first century Galilee. He will expand us as individuals and as a community to celebrate the kingdom with him in today's Brooklyn.